Ag PhD full episodes and more are now available on Acres TV, the newest ag platform connecting you to fields of information. Look for us on watchacrestv.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about how herbicide resistance develops. Well, first of all, we talk about this every week on Ag PhD about here's our strategy to control weeds so we don't have herbicide resistance. And when I get asked the question, well, how does herbicide resistance happen? Honestly, a lot of times it's from doing several things wrong, Wait, even just on a small scale. It is, but here's the thing you've always, always got to remember. A dead weed can never become a resistant weed. So as long as you kill all your weeds, you have zero concern, and our planet has zero concern for resistance. Unfortunately, that isn't realistic. All right, so when Brian and I were growing up, we got to walk our soybean fields, and if there was something that a herbicide didn't kill or tillage didn't kill, we pulled it, and we made sure there were no weeds that survived out in that field, but it took a lot of hand labor. There isn't a lot of that that happens anymore. Not a lot of fields get hand walked. So we are relying not on many, a lot of the practices that we're doing. Well, not many people were willing to work as cheap as, as Aaron and me. <laughs> and I shouldn't even use the word willing, unwilling yes, perhaps. Yes, but... well, we wanted to eat, so we had to go pull weeds. <laughs> okay, so when we start talking about herbicide resistance and how we're going to fight that, it's usually just, we wanna use multiple effective modes of action. It's not enough to say, hey, I got three modes of action here. We want three modes of action that all individually will kill that weed. That way, if one of those modes of action is starting to fail, the other two will pick it up and hopefully we have a dead weed. Well, I think back to the 1990s when we were spraying a lot of ALS herbicides like Pursuit, for example, we started to see resistance building to Pursuit. Part of the reason was Pursuit was $20 an acre, Farmers just couldn't afford it. A lot of farmers said, I can only afford $10 an acre, so I'm gonna cut the rate in half. Well, as soon as you're putting a half a dose out there, that allows the weed to build tolerance to it. And like Brian said, if you don't kill the weed, now that weed's gonna be at least more tolerant, if not resistant, and eventually it builds to a full resistance. Well, let's talk about how else you can get a half a dose inadvertently. For example, let's say that you don't have enough water or enough spray pressure to get good coverage on that weed. Let's say that a bunch of it runs off because you sprayed when there was dew in the morning. How about if you're mixing different herbicides and there's what we call antagonism, where one herbicide breaks down the other herbicide so by the time you reach the field, there's not as much left. Similarly, what if there are things in your water, like hard water ions, calcium, magnesium, iron, that tie up some of that herbicide now it's like you're spraying a half dose. So there are a lot of these things where we don't even think about it, but effectively, we are not putting the full rate out there. Well, here's the way I think about it the most. You're labeled up to a three inch or four inch tall weed. You've got a few weeds out in the field that are a foot tall. Obviously, they're at least three times bigger than what the labeled rate is going to cover. So you know you're getting a less than perfect dose on those plants. And what do we see a lot of times? Well, it burned a few leaves off, but it didn't kill the weed. Yep, just like when you spray too early and it's really cold and you don't get absorption or movement to the growing point. I mean, there are just so many things that we could talk about here. The key thing that I guess we wanted to leave you with today is it's not that difficult for many weeds to build tolerance and eventually resistance to a lot of herbicides. So we have to keep using multiple effective modes of action and just keep working as many different angles as we can, whether it's tillage, having narrow rows, higher populations, anything at all that helps us, that's awesome. But well, we need all those strategies to stop our weed of the week. We'll show you how to control this weed later in the show. <music> <laughs>